Okay, traders, welcome to this week's weekly markets analysis with me, Patrick Munnerly. Um, before I get going, uh, can you just confirm that you can see the tick mill welcome screen and you can hear me loud and clear if you could type a Y in the chat box? A Y in the chat box if you can hear me and you can see my screen. Good stuff. Okay, let's get going. Um, before we start today's discussion, as always, we need to pay attention to the risk disclaimer. And um, specifically for today's conversation and presentation, uh, the views expressed by me here today are solely mine and they're not indicative or representative of Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Uh, so for those that are here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself. Um, after I graduated from university, I uh, joined a city uh, PLC consulting firm. And after a couple of years learning the ropes, I left with some colleagues and went on to co-found and successfully exit a consulting startup uh, this took me to about late 2004. I then moved on to explore my passion for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading or more appropriately day gambling the S&P and after some early beginner's luck I racked up some pretty solid gains. However as is often the case my beginner's luck ran out and as the market phase changed I began to average down into what were to be significant losing positions, giving back not just all my gains, but ultimately experiencing a six figure financial hit to my personal capital. Uh, to say this was a gut wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make money from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for 18 months to two years, it was a period during which I not just up my technical game, researching and developing a strategy that suited my personality, extensively back and forward testing and developing a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably the most important watershed shift I made was from being a highly goal orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming a purely processed orientated individual. So what does that mean? Well, actually it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have that professional trading mindset, and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you really lose that emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcomes of trades or, or even a bunch of trades. My focus really is on the next hundred trades because I, I know if I focus on excellence in execution and my mindset, I will, uh, my edge, my trading edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy trading approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Uh, since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital. The performance data you can see on the screen is for my managed account service. And again, I've managed to deliver annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Um, since 2010, I've also personally mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. I've consulted to numerous brokers and trading education brands, contributing written content, webinars, and live presentation content on a range of topics from market analysis to trading strategy development and execution. 
In addition to my fund management and private mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert for Ticknell, providing uh, daily market analysis and daily technical analysis in terms of potential trade setups via their, uh, the Ticknell blog. You can actually register through the blog to receive those updates on, uh, on a daily basis uh, for both the uh, daily outlook and my, my chart of the day on the setup that I'm watching, potential technical pattern that's developing in the markets. Uh, my other, I guess, passion project is as head of trading and trader education for a leading trading education brand, fxcareerswap.com. Um, we offer development and more importantly, funding to retail trading talent, FX Career Swap. We don't just develop retail traders market and trading strategy knowledge. We work on mindset development through a structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. For those that are interested in learning more about what we do at FX Career Swap, uh, you can see there's a telephone number here on the screen, or you can email the guys in London and, uh, and they'll come back to you uh, as quickly as possible with, uh, with additional information. So that uh, gives you a flavor of, uh, of my background and, and experience. And so let's, uh, let's start this week. I want, to, um, I want to address really some of the price action we've seen in, uh, in the markets, specifically over the past few days. Uh, it's led, I think, for some to question uh, what's going on and want to get a, a better understanding. So I'm just going to briefly give you my take on where we're at and what's driving uh, the, the narrative at the moment. Um, as we've, you know, we've seen a pretty chunky pullback yesterday, uh, but we have pulled into, we have pulled back in respect to technical levels at this point. So a few of the key drivers um, we want to think about in terms of markets as to whether or not the underlying narrative has changed. Uh, we can think about fiscal, the fiscal impulse, fiscal policy uh, is really expected to support the economy in 2021. Whether we see that uh, $1.9 trillion stimulus out of Biden administration, or even half that amount in the event it uh, pursues a reconciliation strategy to push through relief, uh, it's also likely that the administration will later try and implement uh, a mega package of infrastructure spending uh, in, in terms of a, a much bigger recovery package. From a monetary policy perspective, uh, remains accommodative. Uh, Fed Chair Powell struck a dovish tone on Wednesday. Uh, we should expect asset purchases to continue at the current rate until the economy begins turning a corner. And rates are going to stay low until the economy has actually turned that corner. Uh, with respect to COVID and vaccinations, uh, the news on vaccinations has, in, on the whole, been positive. In the US, Americans are now expected to receive vaccinations far sooner than they had imagined just a month ago, leading to an argument of potentially a quicker recovery than previous forecast. Uh, the supply chain of vaccinations should also improve uh, over time, uh, bolstering the vaccination narrative uh, on, a, on a global scale. In terms of other demand factors, it's noteworthy that the term structure of crude futures remains backwardated amid the downside seen in equities. While this may be in part due to the supportive supply side factors, the crude complex has been very sensitive to demand side developments around COVID and the fact that we remain in backwardation for now is still a positive for these markets. From an earnings perspective, fundamentally, corporate earnings have also been holding up very well and as companies experience the recovery. From a positioning perspective, JP Morgan notes that um, the US, US household investment in, um, in the US equity markets remains at historically high levels, although this is not the case in Europe, but positioning across risky assets with a longer term time frame is really quite low. And so given the market volatility and tail risk potential, uh, JP Morgan expects positioning from, uh, from the retail space to increase. So what are the potential risks that we're currently facing? Well, um, Goldman Sachs identify three factors. Firstly, uh, as the economies reopen, the consumer might be more ca cautious despite these, these wider vaccinations. Secondly, virus mutations significantly increase the bar for herd immunity over time. And thirdly, the ev evolution of uh, vaccine resistant virus strains that would require a new vaccine and another round of vaccination. There is also a confidence risk. This week's narrative has been really driven by hedge funds that have been forced to liquidate shorts uh, in, supported by recent retail activism. So I'm guessing you've all heard about the GameStop scenario, AMC and Nokia, for example. 
And by extension, what this means is that fund managers also need to liquidate profitable long positions to maintain value at risk ratios. Even though these names are not in themselves systemically significant, this dynamic of selling is knocking confidence amid some institutional market participants, as it's clearly stoked a bit of volatility, as we saw yesterday. So bottom line, I guess, is, is going back to, to the downside move. None of the reasons cited for selling have yet provided any signal that can shape the broader narrative as identified by uh, the investment banks at JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs. And like I say, from a technical perspective, the although the, the sell-off was pretty uh, vicious yesterday, we have simply traded back into the monthly pivot and monthly projected uh, range supports at this 3,700 level. Now, we could see a bit more pressure into the weekend here as, as, uh, as liquidation may, uh, may step up into month end. We've got month end tomorrow and City note now that because of the, uh, the last few days in terms of volatility, that uh, their month end signal now is a mild dollar buy signal, which has flipped from a dollar sell signal. And specifically in the risky FX pairs, uh, the Aussie and the Kiwi, and we'll look at those charts in a minute. So if we do extend in terms of a bit of downside here, what I'd be watching very carefully is uh, this 3650 level, because that will be a third test of the primary trend line from last year's low. So whilst we hold above that level, it's really not going to be prudent to get overly bearish. So what we can be, what we can see is a bit more corrective action, and we'll look on the uh, the intraday timeframes in a minute. But keep this level in mind. It's also uh, the weekly S three, so thirty six fifty is going to be pivotal. Certainly, if we've got to close back through uh, thirty five seventy, which was the breakout point from last year, uh, thirty five eighty, sorry then that's, uh, that could send a, a few alarm bells ringing and we might see a bit more, uh, bit more downside. But ultimately, um, if, we do, if we do start to, to move to the downside, the, uh, the logical objective for that would be the yearly pivot back down to 32.30. But for now, it's really not, uh, it's not prudent, like I say, to get overly bearish because at the moment the trend is intact and what we're seeing at the moment is simply a pullback in that trend. So. We've got some key levels to keep in mind, uh, and you might just want to make a note of those because if you start to see closes below those levels, then this uh, then we could see a shift in terms of market mood. Uh, equally with the Nasdaq, we've got another key level with the, uh, the I mean the Nasdaq hasn't even tested the monthly pivot yet. Uh, the monthly pivot comes in at 12, 12,686, and then we've got that trend line also coming in at that level, uh, 12,666. So that's going to be the key level for the NASDAQ and certainly bullish reversal patterns from there, uh, to my mind, would offer an opportunity to get in on the long side, targeting the ascending trend line resistance uh, significantly higher. Uh, we've also got the similar story here with the S&P. So if we can, uh, if, if this, if we do get bullish reversal um, patterns from this trend line, then certainly I'd be looking on the long side and thinking about 4,000 as the next logical upside objective and then potentially on to 4,200, which is a uh, target for the year ahead. So those are just some key levels in terms of these broader indexes. I know as traders, you, uh, you can be bombarded by news and uh, uh, certainly the sentiment on some of these, uh, these news channels, CNBC uh, specifically, can be quite uh, uh, sensational at times. Uh, and it's, it's useful to just step back and look at the actual technical levels and see what they're, uh, see what they're actually saying. And at the moment, like I say, the trend is still currently intact. So we've uh, let's jump into the, the charts and look at some structures and see where we are uh, from a price action perspective and see if we can identify some potential trading zones, trading ac action areas of interest. So dollar index, um, we look like we're going to make a test here of the projected weekly range resistance, uh, 9089, and we've got projected daily range resistance, 91. So if we get a push up into this area today, watch, uh, watch for bearish reversal patterns on the four hour time frame here, because we have still got divergence with respect to uh, with respect to our momentum study, our psych indicator down here. So any move into this zone could actually be the catalyst for uh, another leg to the downside um, I've been looking for a test of this 
uh, 80 area. So watch how we trade in this zone. If we take this level out, if we take this area out on a closing basis, then we want to think in terms of the, uh, the upside objective. And what we're always looking for initially here is an equal leg versus this structure here, which would actually put us up into uh, this 91, uh, 9160 area. So that would be the monthly R3. Uh, I don't think we're going to be seeing it today, but um, we've also got the daily R3 up there. Uh, sorry, the weekly R3. So we'll see how uh, you see it. See how it responds on a test into this 91 area. If we get through there on a close, then the next upside objective is going to be 9160 to 9170. And certainly, I'd pay very close attention to price action at that level because uh, that would ultimately complete a equidistant swing. And certainly, we can anticipate some profit taking at a minimum there, and potentially the next leg of downsides in the dollar index. And uh, just to refresh. From a weekly perspective, uh, if we go to the DXY, I'm looking for a test of 87.42, which is the equal leg. Let's just scroll out here on the weekly chart, and uh, that's my current downside objective uh, for this uh, for this leg in terms of the dollar index. So, the two key areas to watch in terms of potential uh, reversal zones. Um, in terms of the bond market, the 10-year ten ten notes here, uh, interesting to see how we trade at this resistance zone. Looks like we're going to test there um, into this 137.22 area. This could set up the next leg of downside in terms of, uh, in terms of the bonds. So keep an eye on that for the nice descending trend line and uh, see if we... Uh, if when we get into this area, we've got uh, we've got some nice divergence developing, and that could set up another leg of downside there. In terms of the euro dollar, uh, the euro broke uh, broke its trend line support, the interim trend line support, and what I'm now looking for is a move down ultimately to test here uh, weekly and daily range support. One twenty fifty is the is the objective here and uh, see how we respond there. That will broadly coincide with the dollar testing its, uh, testing its 91 levels. So I wanna see how we respond there because if we hold here, then I'd be actually be looking for uh, potential long positions in the Euro, certainly to get back up into the mid range. At the moment we're trading a range here of between 123.50 and 120.50. So uh, we'll see how we trade if we get down into this area to, uh, to do something on the long side, targeting a move back into initially into, into the mid range. Sterling. Watching, uh, I have been watching this trend line uh, support. It looked uh, earlier on, it looked a bit, it looked bullish. Uh, obviously, this candle closes at the, this four hour candle closes at 2 p.m., uh, but we're, uh, we look like we're rolling over a little bit here now. If we take out the trend line, then what I'd be looking for is a move down to test uh, weekly range support at 135.38. And then maybe we get a bit of a, a corrective pullback. But at that juncture, what I'd be looking for is this primary trend line to get tested at 134.50. Uh, certainly, I've become uh, very interested to see how we respond at that area. Bullish reversal patterns there would, uh, would warrant long positions. Again, initially, told me to move back into the middle of this range that we've been trading in here so far uh, in 2021. We can look at 134.50 and 137.50. So uh, back into the midpoint of the range with bullish reversal patterns at that area. But equally, if we hold and we can get a bullish reversal into the four hour close here, then, uh, then I could look at long positions for a move up into the 138.50 target zone. So uh, we'll have to see how we close there in terms of, uh, in terms of sterling. Dollar yen, pushing, looking for a test of uh, monthly range resistance and daily range resistance here, 104.45 is the area I'd be watching. I think we can see a pullback then, um, but ultimately whilst we hold 103.30 now, uh, we do have an equal legs upside objective at 105.13, but uh, I think we'll, uh, we'll have to see how we trade at this 104.50, 104.40 area first. I think that's gonna be an area that uh, we can see a bit of a, a battle and uh, the potential for pullback to 103.80 uh, would be uh, logical from there. Aussie testing uh, projected descending trend line support here. Um, 
What we've got also, if we look in terms of A, B, C, we've exceeded uh, the, the, the initial downside objective there at uh, 76.22. Now, if we, if we don't find support at, the, at this daily um, range support, then I'd look for a move down into the weekly S3, 75.30, 75.50, Expect a, expect a pop from there. So if we do trade here and don't get the reversal from this area, then I'd be looking for that, for this area to provide some support and uh, watch for bullish reversal patterns get us back up to retest these prior uh, range loads here. 60, 76.50 would be the objective uh, from a bullish reversal at 75.50 area. Kiwi. Similar story here. I think we can get a little bit more potential for a little bit more weakness in the Kiwi. We have uh, an equal legs target, which is down at the 7027 level. So any support that we find in and around uh, just below the 71 handle, I think could be corrective. And what I'd, uh, what I'd anticipate is we kind of replicate the price action that we saw on this initial leg down. So we, we got the move from the lows, which we've got here. Then we saw some corrective move and the next leg lower. So that's what I'd be looking for to develop here in terms of the Kiwi. Um, and ultimately I'm looking for a test of uh, 7027 on the downside. Dollar CAD, I'm looking for it to test into the 129 area. And I think we can, uh, we, which, well, we've, we're sitting right at the equal legs objective here versus this swing. Um, so 128.81, we saw a bit of profit taking. I had a, a short position running in that this morning. Um, but what I've been looking for is certainly resistance into 129. As, uh, as an opportunity to see this pullback. And certainly we can anticipate a retest of 128 from there. We're, we'll buy a step back in, maybe. Uh, if they do, then we'll be looking for 129.50. However, if we don't get, uh, if we don't find sufficient demand there, then we could be back into, uh, back into 127 in, uh, in quite a quick clip. So uh, pay attention to how we respond here at this 129. Bearish reversal patterns certainly are a, uh, are a short, shorting opportunity for at least a 128 test. Dollar Swiss. I think we, uh, well, the, the story here is basically we have this inverse head and shoulders scenario uh, that's been developing for a while now in the Dollar Swiss. Let me just draw that in for you guys. So we've got a, a left shoulder here. Got our head, and then we've got a right shoulder over here that's uh, that's been in the hopper for quite a while now, and uh, and potential here is for this to uh, to break higher, and um, and ultimately if we can, if this pattern does play out, I'm looking for a test up towards ninety fifty in the in the Swissy. Pay attention to how we trade here, though, at this 89.30, 89.40 area, because we've got daily range resistance and uh, weekly range resistance. That could prompt another leg of downside before we, uh, before we get this move. But if we can get a close above that area, then certainly uh, this 90.50 area starts to, uh, starts to look attractive on the upside. Sterling Yen. Um, Two areas of interest for me here. I'm watching any pullback into the 141.84 area, bullish reversal patterns, long positions to target the top side of this potential ending diagonal pattern, uh, looking for a 143.30, 143.50. Watch for bearish reversal patterns there, especially if we can get this mo uh, momentum divergence remains intact. So uh, on new highs, uh, a failure to, to take out these prior swing points in terms of the momentum uh, psych indicator would set up a potential short position from 143.30, 143.50. Uh, can certainly look at 141 to the downside in terms of sterling yen. Euro yen uh, continues to consolidate here. Um, whilst we hold this trend line support, I think we can trade higher and certainly we see 126.90 potentially back into the highs here at 127.40. Failure, if we take out 125.50, however, uh, then we need to think in terms of uh, equal legs to the downside, in terms of the uh, euro yen, and we could actually be trading back to 124. So pay attention if, uh, if we do breach the, this, this area, 123.50s, uh, any pullback then 
into this trend line would actually be an opportunity to get in on the short side. Uh, like I say, looking for that 123 test then, and, uh, and we'd have to uh, reassess from there. So uh, this trend line is going to be pivotal. Certainly this 123.50 is the main battleground for the Euro Yen. Aussie Yen pulled back. I'm looking for equal legs here, 79 tests. See how we respond there. That could set up the next leg of upside in the Aussie Yen. Certainly bullish reversal patterns here. I'd be looking to do something on the long side. At a minimum, we can expect to move back into this 80 area, uh, into the mid range. Euro Aussie. We've, uh, we've exceeded the equal legs. We've, we've traded through weekly and daily range resistance. So any pullbacks at this stage have to think in terms of being corrected and look for another leg higher. I'd be looking for a test now at the psychological um, 160 level in terms of the Euro Aussie. So any pullback here, bullish reversal patterns from support in and around this 158 are, uh, are a decent opportunity on the long side, like I say, and target a move to 160. Euro sterling continues in this contracting uh, potential uh, ending diagonal pattern. But what I anticipate versus the weekly target that I've got at the 86 level, any, any upside at this stage, I think, is corrective. And I'm looking for, uh, for lows, uh, lower prices in terms of the, the euro sterling. Sterling Kiwi is an interesting one. I'm keeping an eye on this. Uh, we have a potential uh, pretty significant uh, inverse head and shoulders scenario developing. So any pullbacks now that find support into, uh, into this 89, 189 area, um, certainly bullish reversal patterns will be interesting on the long side. Equally, if we can take out the, uh, the monthly range resistance here at 193, then we could look at shallower pullbacks into uh, 190 as a, as a buy zone uh, for, for higher prices in terms of the sterling kiwi. So I'm going to keep an eye on, uh, on if we can get a close. We've got um, equal legs objectives here, 92.50, 92.60 is a symmetry swing versus the last uh, big corrective move we see, we, we've seen in sterling kiwi. So like I said, if we can get a close through 193, I think we can get more constructive on the sterling kiwi and, uh, and pullbacks to be bought for, uh, for higher prices. Dollar yuan has tested uh, equal leg and monthly range resistance, daily range resistance overnight. And uh, we've, uh, sorry, this week, and we've seen the pullback. So now we have to see, are we, is the trend gonna continue to the downside or can we put in some sort of base here versus that weekly target, uh, or sorry, that weekly chart that we have uh, been tracking. Sitting right on that big weekly trend line support. And we have, uh, we have certainly seen some profit taking at a minimum and uh, potential reversal signs developing in, uh, in the dollar yuan. But really to, to, to start getting very positive, we need to get a move up through uh, 655. And then what we could be thinking about in terms of uh, inverse head and shoulder scenario uh, for, for to trade much higher in terms of the, uh, the dollar yuan. So uh, whilst we hold below this uh, 651 area, then uh, we can still see some further consolidation to the downside. S&Ps, talked about this earlier. So we've got an interim trend channel, uh, monthly range resistance, uh, sorry, range support that we're holding. Um, but that key level to watch as we, uh, as we trade through the, uh, the next few sessions is, uh, is going to be, where's that chart gone? Ah, first one. Uh, it's going to be that uh, 3650 area. So um, pay attention to that zone, which comes in down at the, uh, the weekly S3 as well, we've got there. So one of, if we do start to roll over here and we see some uh, extended selling, watch how we trade that's 36.50 bullish reversal patterns. Uh, it's certainly you could, there's a, there, there'll be a, a, a bounce opportunity there back into, I would anticipate this uh, 37.80 area because this, if, if we if we get in here and buy a zoo step in at a minimum, you can expect a three wave correction to my mind from this area and potentially we can uh, we can start another leg um, to the upside. Dow Jones, similar story. We've got uh, we've got a target here 
at uh, just below 30,000. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there. Uh, could be that this is the first leg down and we get a three-way correction, another leg down in terms of the Dow, but uh, certainly pay attention to this zone that's just below the 30,000 area. Bullish reversal patterns, I think, are good for a trade, at least back up into the 30,600 level. DAX. Testing, testing its equal, leg, uh, equal legs objective and finding some pretty strong bids at the moment. We've also got the weekly S3 there, projected range uh, support, daily range support. So we want to pay attention to this. Uh, if we can get, um, if, the, if, we, if we go onto the hourly chart and start to take a look and see, it doesn't look impulsive yet. We'll see an impulsive pattern develop and then there could be the opportunity to buy a pullback in terms of the DAX. As, uh, as the correction could be complete. So we keep an eye on price action in the DAX. Nikkei, also testing its equal leg support at the moment, uh, attracting some, uh, some support, but uh, we'll need to see a close back through 28,500 really to get constructive on the Nikkei. Uh, we could be headed to test uh, monthly range, uh, support down to 27,000 and these prior highs here will be the logical uh, next leg to the downside. FTSE, holding uh, monthly range support and uh, I'm trying to, find, uh, trying to find its legs here, but it uh, looks under pressure at the moment. And uh, if we take out the 6,430 area, then I'm looking for the 161 extension down to 6,327 and see how we respond there. Certainly what you could anticipate from, from that zone would be a, uh, a three-wave corrective move and then uh, get us back up into this uh, 66.31 area and then we'd, uh, then we'd have to reassess. Gold, uh, very, uh, very choppy trading at the moment in gold versus this 18.31 low, if it holds, we have a 19.03 equal legs target there in terms of gold. So we'll have to see if they can hold 1831. Then we can get back up into this zone before uh, the next leg to the downside in terms of gold. Not, uh, not terribly attractive trading conditions at the moment in gold. Similar story with silver. Um, choppy, very, very choppy trading uh, and not, uh, not particularly favorable conditions. Crude. Looking for crude, what I'm paying most attention to in crude is this uh, projected ascending trend line support, 5160 area. Any move into here and bullish reversal patterns, I would certainly be looking on the long side in terms of crude. I'm ultimately looking for a test of $60 in terms of crude. So uh, let's see how we trade here. Um, but any test of this trend line, I think is going to be worth uh, paying attention to in terms of crude oil. Copper. Dr. Copper um, testing its uh, support area, monthly range support and, uh, and equal legs. But now we've got to pay attention. If, if we can recover here, and it looks like we're going to try and, uh, try and make a stand, um, pay attention to this descending trend line at uh, 362. Bearish reversal patterns there, I think, could offer a decent shorting opportunity to ultimately test this major uh, ascending trend line support from the from, uh, from, the, from the lows there at uh, 3.35. That could be very interesting then for a longer term uh, buy opportunity in terms of copper. Last but not least, everybody's uh, favorite Bitcoin. So we held the equal legs target to the tick at uh, 28,700. Um, what I'd be looking for now is we really need to see this. Uh, we, we obviously came straight back into the mid range and uh, we've seen a pullback. If we can hold this, uh, these lows, then what I look for is a breach of the 34,700 area that, uh, that could then give the next leg of upside in terms of uh, Bitcoin. Also, we're looking for a test of this mid 44,000 area. Uh, but if we take out the 28,700, then uh, next stop, I think, is going to be trendline support down to 23,000 in, uh, in terms of Bitcoin. So that gives you uh, a flavor of what it is I'm looking at, where I see potential opportunities coming, paying very close attention to how the dollar index and the S&P trade at these pivotal levels now. Um, and it's going to define, I think, the next phase of, uh, of, of action for us in terms of these markets. So some key levels I've highlighted there. Pay attention to those, mark them up on your charts. And if you uh, 
as per your trading strategy, if you get a signal, then, uh, then best of luck to you. So uh, are there any questions with respect to uh, any charts that I haven't covered that anyone would like me to take a look at? Mesa, hand up. Hi Mesa, how are you doing? Hi Patrick, I'm good, how are you? Yeah, very good indeed, thanks. Patrick, I got a question about this um, GameStop situation. Uh, so from my very basic understanding is a hedge fund they shorted it and then uh, people on Reddit um, started buying the stock and that's why it put the hedge fund in, um, in a bit of trouble. Sure. Is that correct? It's, it's a little bit more complex than that because it's to do with options flow and it's to do with um, options flow that is basically forcing the options providers or referred to as market makers to have to cover their exposure in the underlying market. So these guys or, or these, uh, the, this crowd on Reddit or this big retail crowd um, have basically been buying uh, out of the money call options. So strike prices above the current price of the market and in some instances at way out of the money. But because of the sheer volume going into these options, it's, um, it's, made, it's meaning that the market makers have to cover themselves in the underlying market and in doing so they're uh, they're elevating the price and at the same time you have uh, some big institutional players who are short this uh, short these the short game stop and uh, and have, are having to cover because they can't risk blowing up their their funds on a single bet okay so so when they, so what, sorry so when they're covering uh, they're basically, what they're doing is they're having to cover their short positions by liquidating profitable long positions, because when you cover your short, it's, it's, it's a cash transaction. So at that point, they're having to sell their long positions, which is causing the market volatility we're seeing. And then they're using those profits to cover the, the, uh, their short books. Okay, okay. So it's not as simple as... Uh... If they went short, they, they would they could have put in a, a stop loss, and that would have like prevented them to going to losing this much money. No, no, no. no. You're, you're, we're, we're, you're, these guys aren't. Um, these guys when they when they borrow, they're, they're borrowing shares. They're not. This isn't uh, as easy as putting a, a stop in place. This okay. Is, this is institutional trading whereby they're actually borrowing shares in the market. So they paid. You know, they they'll pay a price of X, and that will be in potentially hundreds of millions or even billions and so that's a fixed price and that and then their profits or losses fluctuate depending upon the share price but if you're short the problem with a short position is um you know th there is no stock on the upside so prices just can continue to rise and you've got to think to yourself at which point you you're prepared or or, or you, uh, at which point are you potentially insolvent because okay okay losses. do you see what i mean because yes. ultimately when you cover your short position you have to have the money to execute the transaction yeah yeah you, your losses are are on paper initially but that paper loss becomes <laughs> becomes a financial loss when you have to cover your positions i see i see yeah cool. uh, thank we, you Patrick. we're not we're not dealing with 100 pips up loss there yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good question, though. Thanks for that. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? If you don't have a question, an N in the chat box is just as useful. So I know we're all on the same page, and uh, and we've covered uh, and we've covered everything for this week. Okay, guys. If there aren't any other questions, I'm going to wrap this one up here, and we will reconvene at the same time next week. Thanks very much, and I hope this helps.